everybody. Welcome back to Taz's Wing Closet at Wing Studio One. Today, December 1st, 2020 is launch day for the four of the newest Ellen Villa styles. Today, I'm going to show you an unboxing, review, and comparison of their newest dance in the color Candy Blonde Tipped. All of this coming up. This style was sent to me by Ellen Villa and Wig Studio One for this review today. We invite you to shop at Wig Studio One. If you expand the description box below, you'll find a link to this particular style as well as the other Ellen Villa styles. You'll find details and pricing and a promo code there. If you have any question, feel free to reach out to Wig Studio One at support at wigstudioone.com. That Ellen Villa Fall 2020 collection has really captured my personal taste, which is that short to mid-length wavy category. I'm excited to be able to present three of the new four styles that are coming out. But today we're going to take a look at a very highly anticipated style called Dance in the color Candy Blonde Tipped. Let's take a look. So, so it comes in the typical Peruki style box. All of their Peruki designs are here. Nothing new about the packaging so far. I really like the flap that they use, the, the sturdy cardboard flap instead of the tissue paper that tends to wrinkle up real bad. Okay, so inside lies Dance. And there's no net around it. Sometimes with Ellen Villas, you don't get the nets, but it is turned inside out. And it's supposed to be a shorter style, so it probably won't hurt a thing. Okay, so while we have this open, let's go ahead and take a look at this cap. So I like what I see so far. You'll notice that there is a temple to temple lace front. It's nicely contoured there. It does extend back into the ear tab. I really have to think back about the last time I have seen one of Ellen Villa's lace fronts um, that were constructed like this. That moves seamlessly back into a left-hand monofilament side part that does reach all the way back to the crown, the little inspector tag there. Um, the cap is really very minimal, meaning that it's very light. It feels very light to the touch. Um, it's very soft and pliable. You've got a Velvet, a closed velvet ear tab with nice sturdy stays. An extended velvet nape with Velcro style adjusters. Some additional darting there for a nice fit. So this seems to be a really nice cap uh, by Ellen Villa. I'll be sure to remark on the fit when I try it on. All right, there it is. This reminds me of some styles that have come out before it. Just looking at it right out of the box, it really kind of reminds me of the uh, the Belle Madame Kiramano SF Plus. That is one that I definitely uh, would love to compare. It seems a lot lighter and less heavy than something like um, Sweet Talk, which is in this category as well. So I chose to wear this night wig by Ellen Villa in the color Candy Blonde Rooted. And the Candy Blonde Rooted and the Candy Blonde Tipped, I'm imagining should Blonde tipped, I'm imagining should be uh, very, very similar. So what it is is um, more of a pearl platinum and then mixed in there, then I always thought looked to me like a sand, a light sandy brown. They're describing this as a light reddish brown. Um, and I think the code on this uh, candy blonde tipped is 1012760. So that 27, they're calling that light reddish brown. Now it's not gold though, and that's why I feel like um, it's more sandy in tone than gold in tone, so I like that effect. And then um, it has a lot of white in it, so you'll see that 60. And then everything is sort of graduates down into a solid platinum tip. I see that with the Candy Blonde Rooted as well. I think that there's more of an ombre effect going on with this Candy Blonde Tipped. So I'm not sure that there's a huge difference between the two. Um, because they probably have the same exact color codes. Now on the Candy Blonde tip, you'll see a root as well. And that rooting is actually really well done. I would say 
Okay, they're not telling me what the root color is there, but I would say that's probably about a 10 root. So it's a little lighter than an eight. Um, a 10 to 12 would probably be more accurate here. Okay, so just these loose, broken spirals, kind of in that shattered texture. You can see it's been taken down on the ends and razored quite a bit. This ought to be a fun one. Okay, so I have the tags off and I just wanted to uh, let you know kind of where I start. So I just give it a nice vigorous shake while it's upside down. That kind of loosens the fiber, sets it, sets it free, gives it a more natural movement, brings air into the layering, gives it a nice wispy appeal. Now, sometimes if there's a heavy, heavy permatease layer, I'll also go in and just uh, comb a little bit at the root while I have it upside down, and that will further unhinge some of the permatease from the cap. This particular style doesn't appear to have much permatease at all, no visible permatease that I can see. Um, all right, so this is ready to try on. Okay, just going through my adjustments now. All right, so this is kind of your typical look right out of the box. I can tell it has a lot of potential. Um, a lot of times you just need to get in there and separate the fibers further. So the first place that I typically start is by finding my parting space, a parting space that I'm happy with. Okay. So it does have that monofilament there. So that'll be my guide to start working on this. Okay, remarking on the fit. So I'm a petite, petite average circumference. This seems to fit me um, just a little loose. So I'm thinking this is very much average right out of the box. I can easily make an adjustment to accommodate a petite to average circumference. I would never wanna speculate on anything above a 22 inch though, um, because there's simply just no way for me to measure that. Okay, cute, right? So let's run down the specs real quick. So about seven inches in the front, overall about nine inches from the crown down. And then you'll find a two and a half inch nape, but that crown really meets that nape in a way. I don't think we're gonna have any coverage issues. Sort of just a minimally layered here. And again, we do have that lace front left monofilament side part. So let's take a look here. And I'll have to do some more work on this part to get it exactly where I want it. Oh, it's very well done, I think it does. It lays flat to my head. Sometimes Ellen Villa, I try them on and there's a little bit of a warping effect there and it just takes me a little while to get that to lay flat. But this one lays flat automatically. It's extended back into the ear tab. So I love, love, love the look of this one. The knots are fairly fine. In terms of the highlight being brought right up to the root, there might be a few lighter pieces in there. It's not a dramatic banding effect though. Very well done. And then it's not too thickly threaded on the top. Uh, overall, this density is super light. And then you can see the illusion of scalp all the way back to the crown there. Okay, so this piece here on the left kind of wants to swoop on over and that is part of the deal when you get a curly style. You don't know how it's going to be formed and shaped right out of the box. Curls can go this way and the next one, the one next door can go the opposite way. Um, but that's rather cute. If you do a nice wide part, still working within the parting space that's offered by the cap. Oh, it's cute. I usually like a little bit of lift and contour coming off of that lace front. And I still may just sort of work with my hands a little bit to add that in 
Let's see what it can do here. These fibers are super fine and they don't have a ton of body. They're not meant to. Um, so sometimes it's a little harder for, for them to respond to some of these techniques just because of the fine fiber. But no, this one actually looks like it, it's gonna respond very well. So what I do is I just warm up my hands Place the root underneath the palm in the direction that I want the root to go in, up and back, okay? That's going to create a little bit of training there. And if it's stubborn, or if I want something a little more permanent, I will use a shot of steam in that area. Uh, but if you still want the versatility of it, you can wear it down or up and away. You can use a little bit of product, a little bit of styling paste or something else to create the look that you want. So we're gonna leave it down for, for this review and I might work with it a little more in the styling segment. So it only weighs 2.8 ounces when we talked about how fine texture this is how low and light of a density it is. Extremely light density, wispy, fine, feathery type fibers. It has some cute, nice movement. It's wispy though. I mean, it's not a, it's not a heavy swingy movement, but it just flutters on a breeze. So if you're wondering if I personally like it, I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> this is just really something that I can wrap my arms around. It's been a while since Ellen Villa has come, things, come up with something that I personally enjoy so much, but I'm just really, really excited about this. Now, I believe they are offering um, nine different colors on this style. I think they have, uh, they have a red, um, they have one brunette, <clears throat> They have a lot of blondes, um, a lot of different kinds of blondes that I've never heard of before, like this candy blonde tipped. I've heard of the candy blonde rooted. Uh, <clears throat> and then there's a sand, a light sand tipped, I think, as I was looking. So that's one I've never explored before either. So take a look at the color offerings on this one. I'm not sure, did I see a gray or a, a, a gray white mix? I could have too. I think that would be gorgeous on a style like this. Um, and again, I feel like that root transitions very well and very naturally. In terms of permatease, you guessed it, it's very light on permatease. Um, upon visual inspection, I didn't see any uh, on the cap. They were using some of the pre-tease effect where there's a little bit of scalloping at the root just to give it some lift and volume without uh, adding any additional fiber. And as I inspect it with my fingers, the only, the only areas that I feel just a little bit is right there at the top. It's gonna cover your top, wefting very well. But there's no thick, heavy permatees anywhere on this style. Um, and that was the same with the, the night that I had on here during the unboxing. All right, so let's go ahead and do our spin and our walk so that you can see all the way around the movement and the scale of this style. We'll go outside and do the same and then I'll be back with some styling. So as you saw, I took this right out of the box. I have literally done nothing but shake it, apply it, found a parting space, 
and literally you've seen it come to life right in front of your eyes. I have done nothing else to this style. Let's try with glasses. Um, I knew that it would be perfect with glasses because there's virtually no permatease in the temple and ear tab area. It's a very light density. This is a perfect glasses wig. It fits nicely between the ear and the ear tab. So as you watch reviews, you always look to see um, if you can build some volume in a style. A lot of us love volume, some of us don't. This is a style that I think that you can get enough volume to satisfy the, the sculpted look that you're looking for with just a little bit of height on top. Um, there's, there's not much permatease there, but it is not flat. Um, so I think that it's going to be great for those that like a lower profile because of this beautiful density and limited permatease, but also those of you who like a little bit of volume because the way this cut is, it kind of gives you that voluminous round look without having a lot of that permatease. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with this style in front of you so you can see how it moves and reacts. I hope you enjoyed today's review. I have the two other uh, curly styles in that new collection coming soon. We'll talk again soon on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.